Um, here I'm going to present my study on using screencaster to give my students video feedback on their Chinese writing when they were abroad. Uh, because of the time limit, I need to be brave at certain parts of my presentation. So if you have any questions, please ask me at the end. Now let's carry straight on. So first, why I choose to use video to give feedback? In higher education across different disciplines, studies show that uh, compared with traditional written feedback, video feedback has many advantages. Here are some of them from the student point of view. First, it has a higher level of acceptability. Second, it provides flexible access. Third, video feedback is very often personal and individualized. Fourth, video feedback has improved clarity. It is constructive and informative. Moreover, video feedback improves student engagement. Okay, uh, there is an additional benefit of video feedback for language learners. When the teacher or the marker read out students' writing in video, they provide the students with an additional opportunity to hear the language, and this increased exposure to the spoken language. Furthermore, when online distance learner heard audio feedback, they felt less social distance. I believe that all these dis uh, advantages made video a good vehicle for delivering feedback to my learners when they were abroad. So uh, who are my students? I have a small group student who took Chinese as part of a degree. By the time they went abroad to study or work, the language proficiency is equivalent to CFR B1 level, uh, with one or two slightly lower or higher. For year abroad, not all of them choose to go to China. For those who did not go to China, they might or might not access a formal Mandarin class. Those who went to China very often stayed there for about six months. Now, during the year abroad, students had to do some writing in Chinese as academic work. The writing was assessed, but the marks did not count toward the degree. Now, on each student work, my feedback consisted of four parts. The first part is an actual mark. I give a mark out of 100 based on given marking criteria. The second part is corrections on language errors or indication of errors. Uh, this was written on student script. Now the third part is summary comments. It was a separate piece of written comments in which I focused on content, ideas, and structures of the writing and fed for what, what to do to improve their work. And the last part was the video feedback. To record the video, I use the free online screencast tool, uh, which is Screencast-O-Matic. Before recording the video, I mark student script first. Then in the video, I read out student sentence, uh, writing sentence by sentence using the mark script and explain the language errors in detail. I also praise uh, whenever students did well. So my video was about five to 10 minutes long, depending on the length and the number of errors in each writing. So here you can see uh, it's four parts of my feedback. There's actual mark, the marked student script. Uh, this is a separate uh, summary piece. I put the video link in there so students can click the, uh, the link to watch the video. Okay, in my study, I want you to know the student uptake of video feedback that is focused on explaining language errors. Uh, some studies show uh, that the micro-level writing issues should be done in text, 
and the screencast should be used for substantive or global feedback. However, in this study, I argue that it is necessary to give micro-level feedback to low-level language learners, such as word choice, phrasing, uh, missing words, pieces, grammar, punctuation, spelling, etc. And I want to know which part or parts of the video feedback is or are the most important element in the feedback package I give to students. I want to know, did students watch the video feedback? If they did, then how did they use it? And what content did they want to be in the feedback video if language explanation were not what they needed? My second research question was about student perceptions of video feedback in comparison with the traditional written feedback. And finally, what is the potential for teachers to use screencast of feedback? Okay, I have some students uh, participate in this study. Three were on year abroad in 2017 to 18, and four were away in year uh, 2018 to 19. The study was uh, carried out in July uh, 2019. I interviewed all seven students, uh, either online, face to face, or through phone call. I invited four teachers who were markers of year academic work of other languages, and three joined the study. I also invited a Mandarin teacher who had experience of giving feedback. Uh, with video, uh, although she didn't really mark year broad academic work. Now, two teachers had a face-to-face -face interview with me and two filled in online questionnaires. Before they did that, I gave them one feedback video to watch. Now, the final part of the data were online record of viewers, uh, for views. Screen customatic website automatically uh, records the number of views of each video that I created. Now, let us have a look at a student uptake of video feedback. Uh, first, unsurprisingly, they all told me that the actual mark was the first thing that they would check. When considering what the most important part was in the feedback package, they went straight to the feedback on the language. Furthermore, all the students felt that it was necessary to point out all language errors so they could avoid making the same mistakes again. They were aware of the Chinese proficiency level and accept the fact that there might be many errors. However, they didn't feel this was discouraging uh, because they also received the praise frequently in videos. Some students would like to self-correct after knowing what type of error they had made, but others preferred reading corrections direct, uh, directly because they either had no time for self-correction or were not confident to catch the verbal correction in videos. Now, none of the participants mentioned any problem when accessing videos. They all took control when watching videos uh, using pause, rewind, and uh, replay buttons. Only one student mentioned that uh, she played forward to skip some parts. Some students took notes when watching videos, but some didn't. Okay, uh, what are student perceptions of video feedback in comparison with written feedback? First, students found the video feedback easy to follow and take in. Some students found it easier sitting down to watch a video than reading a long written feedback. Students who had no problem reading long written feedback also felt it better to see the feedback visually. Second, from student point of view, in videos, explanations were more thorough and in detail. Uh, student, one student said that I feel that sometimes people don't put all the details in the written feedback because you can write pages. 
sometimes they like to hold back a little bit. Uh, third, student mentions that uh, when listening to the video, they had more exposure to the pronunciation because there is no correlation between China written form and its pronunciation. Students acknowledge that the more exposure to the pronunciation, the better. A fourth, video feedback helped building the relationship between the teacher and the student. For some students, watching video was like having someone sit next to you and having chat with you. One student pointed out that the feedback in video was quite spontaneous and was a very honest feedback, not like in written feedback, where teacher would think a lot more about what to write. And another student said that with some of her other language work, when she did not know the marker and the feedback was in written form, she felt that she was not cared about. Okay. Uh, when I asked a student if they would like to have teachers face uh, in the video, like my face in the video, most of them believed it was not necessary. For some of them, it would not add anything, but a big distraction. Students were concerned that it might be off-putting because they might feel that they were, uh, they were being watched by the teacher all the time. To be honest, not. Okay. In fact, we, we're not watching them, just their feeling. Uh, finally, one student point out that uh, video feedback might not be student personal preference, although this student did not really say whether it was her case or not. There is also possibility that students are not able to catch all the verbal corrections or explanations in target language and get lost in translation. Right, so what the teachers say about the video feedback. Uh, I need to mention that two of the four teachers had already used the video to give student feedback and the other two had no such experience. Um, first, the teachers agreed that video feedback was more engaging, personalized and convincing. One teacher commented that uh, with a tutor's familiar voice, even if many comments were negative, it still sounded encouraging. Teachers felt it was almost like being in the classroom while watching the video by themselves. From teachers' point of view, explaining language orally is a more effective way. They all believe that they should provide students with as much feedback on languages as possible. Now, those two teachers who hadn't created video feedback thought it might be helpful in avoiding lengthy email or documents to explain the points. So backwards and forwards all the time. Now, in addition, they believe that the virtual aspect might work very well in the majority uh, with the majority of the students. All teachers believe that video feedback could make the student-teacher relationship closer, especially in the context that students were in another country and lacked interactivity with teachers. So video feedback was not only a good way of giving feedback, but also a good way of keeping in touch with students. But teacher, okay, next teacher, did point out that the video allowed teachers to read out in target language, which was useful for students to listen to. Uh, one common concern from teachers was the time required to produce video feedback. In addition to creating videos, the students' work had to be corrected before producing such videos, and it would be difficult to edit once the video was recorded. Therefore, for two teachers who had given video feedback before, it would be more efficient using screencaster for group feedback. Now the other two teachers would like to try it in a small group, but one felt it quite daunting to use it. 
Uh, another concern from teachers was that weaker students might not be able to understand the verbal corrections in the target language. As you can see in this study, teachers and the students shared the same positive perceptions of video feedback as well as one concern. Now let's have looks at something that students won't tell you. Uh, according to the online record, uh, I found that not everyone who had received video feedback watched them. In two years, I gave 11 year broad students 47 feedback video in total, but only 57% of video were watched. Now, let us break down to each student. In this chart, the light blue bar shows the number of videos students had watched, and next to it, the gray bar shows uh, the number of videos re they, re they received. So you can see that some students did not watch any video, like the student four or six, uh, and some watched partially. Now coming to a quick discussion. Uh, first, this study shows that uh, screencast feedback enhanced student feedback experience. It was easy to access. It gave clearer and in-depth explanatory feedback and a sense of report. Uh, students also appreciate the emotive aspect of video when the marker was not physically uh, present and from the hearing the marker's voice in the target language an actual benefit. Now, from student perspective, it is necessary to address micro-level feedback in video due to their low level of proficiency. One important message from the study is the diversity of students. We need to accept that video feedback is not everyone's preference. So when delivering students' feedback, either in written form or in video, teachers should bear in mind student individual need. Now, despite student positive perceptions on video feedback, this study shows that the existence of video feedback did not lead to learners actively engaging with feedback. So the question here is why? How do we engage students with feedback? either written feedback or video feedback. Uh, I believe it is necessary to further develop students' feedback literacy to enable active uptake of feedback, even when it is uh, in video format. Okay, uh, the study shows students' inclination towards video feedback and their need to have detailed explanations. However, teacher were concerned about the process being time consuming, despite recognizing the pedagogical value of this practice. So what support could the institute or department provide to teachers when using such technology to help them work more effectively and efficiently? And on the other hand, I think we need to manage student expectation. We need to balance teachers' workload while maximizing student individual need. Now, finally, I need to address the limitation of my study. This is a very small scale study. The data were drawn from each participant's perceptual knowledge, and they may not provide a reliable indicator of broader student and the teacher attitude toward video feedback. So studies with bigger samples are needed. And furthermore, uh, we need to focus on the effectiveness of this kind of video feedback. Okay, uh, that's all from me. So thank you for watching. Uh, now, do you have any questions? Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you hear us? Uh, yes, I can hear. Okay. Yeah, we had you muted, uh, or we, we had muted us. So now, now we should be able to talk to you. So thank you very much. Um, any questions? If I may. Yep. Um, 
I would like to ask, um, can you hear me or maybe Jordan? Okay. Uh, um, uh, I wanted to ask whether you think that those students who didn't watch the videos were those whose uh, preference it's not, it's not to, to, to receive uh, such a feedback. Sorry, uh, first it's very uh, low the voice, second got a lot of echoes, so very difficult to hear. Would you mind repeating again? Could you do it or shall I come on? Can you try again because I'm not sure I understood okay. either. <laughs> okay, our question asker is coming closer to the yeah, microphone. Coming closer Great. to ask whether you believe that the students who didn't watch the uh, feedback videos whether it's because they don't prefer this type of feedback. Ah, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't really know because it's very interesting to know that uh, students who participate in this study uh, also watch the, some of the videos I give to them, not all of them. Although in the interview, they all say, uh, the video feedback is really good, really engaging. Some did mention that they did not have time to do it because during year abroad, they could be very busy studying or work. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay. Come closer. Yeah, or I can repeat it for you if you want. Um, well, maybe a bit. Long. Okay, then come up here and <laughs> good. Thank you. <laughs> so, hello. Um, I'm curious to know a little bit more about the assessment because you're asking them to write something. So presumably, from what I saw, it's a text, an essay, uh, and they're in China. Is that right? Ah, uh, they were not necessarily in China. Some students were in China. Some students did not choose to go to China, might go to European countries, mm -hmm. because in our universities, they only study Chinese as part of the degree. Normally, it's 25% of the whole degree. So they have to split the whole year in different countries. So for the writing they did is uh, something about happened in Spain if, you, the, if they're in that country or if they're in China, they can write something about in China. We ask them to reflect on some cultural differences. Right. And you're grading this then when you receive it. You're grading this piece of work. Oh, yes. We give them the, yeah, we give them the actual grade we have marking criteria like uh, having the exams. We use this marking criteria, gives them actual mark, but I also give them lots of feedbacks, yeah. But wouldn't the students in China have an unfair advantage? I mean, they would have plenty of help. <laughs> yes, I did notice that some students came back with excellent piece of writing. <laughs> like it jumped to a couple of levels. So in the feedback, I would ask them, did you get some um, help? Uh -huh. And I also give them be warning saying, you know, when you come back, if your level is so good, you probably can jump to another level to carry on study. Mm -hmm. This, you know, reminds them they have to show their actual uh, ability, not just rely on somebody else proofreading. Right, okay, thank you for that answer. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Okay, any other questions for uh, Ju Chiang? Yes, one more. We have time. Well, yeah. Okay, hello. Um, I would like to ask if uh, you see any limitations in the video feedback because maybe it doesn't stick with the students, just like written feedback does, they can come back to it. So, do they remember uh, what maybe uh, they did wrong or what they did right? Because I know that if, if it's not their preference, but even if they maybe um, forget easily 
or it's not written for them, then they just forget and never learn from it. So what's your experience with this? Sorry, because uh, you speak fast. Every time you speak, there is another voice repeat after you. So two voices mixed together. So can I repeat your question if I stand correctly? Mm -hmm. uh, did you say that uh, if students remembered the video feedback? Mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to written feedback, which they can come back to. Okay, so in my feedback, because uh, I give them some corrections in the script, but the video is more focused on the explanations. So in the, in the script, because there are limited space, they normally do handwriting. I can't really fit everything in, give them detailed explanation. Uh, as movement, the curriculum design always is a policy, do not really ask students to feedback on the feedback, to build this kind of feedback dialogue. So we just send to them. All we can know is whether students download feedback or not. And from my side, I can see if students watched the video or not. But how they watch it in details, uh, did they actually read the written feedback? I don't really know. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. But also, do Thank I understand? You. Sorry, do I understand that they could they could watch the video multiple times, right? They could go back. Yes. Yeah. So it. Yeah. You know. Still. Yeah. Yeah. As I can see uh, on my record on my side, uh, students watch up to four times for each video, but normally one to three times they watched it. And some students uh, took notes. Some students did not take notes. Uh, did not take notes because they saw the videos always there. They can stay there forever. And I did ask them how long you want this video to be kept there. They said at least a year. Okay. Uh, thank you very much um, for your presentation. And we're going to have. Uh, Martina now presents uh, in here. So uh, goodbye from us and, and thanks thank again, Thank you. Thank you.